The first thing people ask me when they see it is, did it hurt? And I tell them straight out, yeah, it hurt like hell. It's a needle pushing ink into your skin. And the second thing they ask me is, why did I get it? And that I have a little harder time with. Uh, a great tattooer named Don Ed Hardy once told me, well, there's really no good reason to get a tattoo. And I, I think there is. I think we who get them, uh, we get them because it's part of how we tell our stories. A little bit. It's, it's reason and mumbo jumbo. It's the eternal battle. Reason's winning, then mumbo jumbo's winning, then reason's winning, then mumbo jumbo's winning. I've always wanted to do that. Thank you. <laughs> um, they're a band of it's Egyptian gods. This is Egyptian also. Uh -huh. um, I'm an anthropology major, uh -huh. so I, and it, Egyptology is kind of what started me off. So I decided to go with the Egyptian thing. It's, a, it's amazing you're picking uh, hieroglyphs, which is probably our first language. One of the first languages. I'm One also a history first. major, so. Okay. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. People have been doing it for 2,000 years. Um, Tattooing is probably as old as man himself. Uh, once I think man figured out that you could paint on something besides cave walls, they started painting on each other. When the first ice man, uh, of the uh, first person of the ice age was uh, found, the remains of that person, there was a tattoo on him. So it really has a very long time history as an art form. I think tattoo artists, when they make their flesh, when they decide upon their set of images, I think it is part of their story. Tattooing never ends. It just keeps evolving. Some of the images come and go and reappear, particularly in, in nautical tattooing. Uh, and then with you know the big boom in the last few years, there's a whole generation of new contemporary artists that have brought a whole new visual language to it. So I think it, being a tattoo artist, they realize they're part of a continuum. What's amazing is how these images get refigured over time. Every artist puts a different stamp on them. Like when you look at the way George Clava treats tattoos as opposed to the way Don Ed Hardy, who's been a tattooer for 25 years, uh, who now lives in, in Honolulu and San Francisco, he not only uses tattoos as uh, a fundamental design for his flesh, he uses them in his other work, uh, where, the, where the tattoos kind of come to life. Um, he makes etchings, paintings, drawings. Um, he's, he's probably the most pioneering tattooer today. The one who has brought tattooing out of, you know, strictly the tattoo shops and into, uh, into our culture. I think you can tell a lot about the culture by what kind of tattoos its people are getting. And in America, tattooing has never been bigger. And it's been pretty much an ignored, insular culture. Uh, the names of the great tattooers are not what we think of when we think of a great American art form. Even though this parallel universe of art has been with us as long as we have been a culture. It's rumored that George Washington had a tattoo. It's rumored that George Schultz, former Reagan cabinet member, had a tattoo of a tiger on his ass. <laughs> I would have liked to have seen that one. <laughs>